damp. It is a bit damp actually. Okay. Probably get that up off the ground though, because it's a bit wet. No, that didn't work at all. Okay. There. Yeah. All in all, the sleeping position's alright. Where are we? Yeah, those rocks are still plenty deep. Ooh, okay. Oh, no, now we're just flashing. Hey, there we go. Well, it was not too bad. Uh, but a few things were going on. Where's my anchor going? Okay, so the wind switched because uh, pretty much most of last night I was um, pretty much going back this way towards the island. I could see the flashing light out the back. And the good thing was it stayed like that pretty much the whole night. But the bad thing was it started to rain quite heavily and the wind picked up. It was pretty, pretty hefty. And, um, and uh, that was fine as well. I just had to let a bit more anchor out. I could do that from in there. I literally just let the anchor out and let it run out and um, probably put another maybe, you know, like six meters or so out, which is why I'm a lot closer to this side of the rocks now. But uh, all in all, like we, we, you know, we had a, not a bad night's sleep apart from that. I got a few hours in before that picked up and then once it calmed down, oh, so this was the other problem. So it turns out at peak high tide, which is at 9.30, at peak high tide at the moment, those waves hitting that edge there, they do come over that so what happened is even though there was still creating a big buffer by peak high tide when the wind started to pick up the waves were also picking up <laughs> so that's why I was really worried about the anchor because there was a maybe a two hour probably from about 9 30 through till about 11 or 12 30 there's this about there's a sort of about a two hour kind of gap with the wind when the wind's that strong where the waves do come over that ridge so once the waves calmed down, then I went back to sleep and I've been asleep on like literally until right now. So, so I've had plenty of sleep. I've, you know, I've had probably a good, I don't know, maybe six hours in total or something. So that's heaps really. I run off a lot less than that sometimes. I don't know about changing the front. Like I do like the fact that like it, at the beginning of the night it was lovely because you're getting this nice breeze through and it kept me nice and cool. I didn't even have the sleeping bag out. But now that the wind's picked up, I did get the sleeping bag out eventually. I guess if you just had it so you blocked just the front little section, not where the anchor goes through because you kind of need to get that access. You have to be able to get the anchor out or adjust it. But maybe if you just had two little wind sort of bluffs at the front, just on those two sections. I still want most of it open, but when you the wind re really picks up, and if it does rain, you're pointing straight into the wind anyway, if you're swinging around like that. In which case, just those front two sections closed in would make a big difference, I think. Maybe. Anyway, it's a long rant, but just had to keep you up to speed on how the boat tent went and how last night went. It was interesting. Yeah, but we survived. And it looks like it's going to be a crack at sunrise. <laughs> Never really captures the true, like the true colours and everything that's coming out here. But I'll tell you what, that sunrise is not disappointing <laughs> at all. The wind's definitely picking up. Might be inside the lagoon day today. Because that wind really is picking up, like you might not be able to see it on camera, and the wind buff gives you a little bit of protection from the wind on the sound wise so it might not pick up as much but it's pretty windy and as soon as that as soon as that edge there starts breaking over it'll probably get lumpy here as well because I'm at the very front leading edge of it when that tide comes up just a little bit more uh, I might go and have a little motor around there and have a little bit of an explore around this edge around this edges all the way to that back half of the island because it might be really nice uh, just around there and uh, sort of tucked away from the wind. But yeah, we'll wait just a second longer. Um, 
We might even make a cup of tea while we wait and it's sort of, it's while it's still calm. These burners are super fast. Way better, like way more heat actually than that other thing that I was using. a little lumpier now it looks like it has cleared that edge though and it's not super super crazy lumpy it's because I guess it's the wind direction and it's just chilled out a bit compared to last night last night it was way way bumpier <laughs> but that wind's definitely not letting up that's for sure I thought I was hoping that it might chill out once after sunrise but it looks like it's gotten worse Oh, that's good. Just contemplate what we should do, but I think, yeah, I definitely think back over there is going to be just a little tucked back up behind that island. Could be a nice place to sort of spend the day. Just hang out, fish that area that's got a bit more protection. Okay, we finish our tea. Chuck that in there, we'll need that tonight. Um, yeah, maybe we'll look at you warmed up, and I guess. Ah, lovely. Always nice. It's always a very satisfying feeling when your motor starts out on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Because <laughs> I've had it not start before too many times. <laughs> But this thing seems to be doing a great job. Love it. So we'll flick our switches on. And mates are coming around. Chris and Yord should be turning up if they brave it um, at some point today. So we'll have the radio on. And we might as well fire the sounder up. And then what are we going to do here? We're going to um, yeah, take just one front edge off so I can get up there and do the anchor. So I guess this side is probably going to be better because um, this side will be better unhooked as well because I can get to the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, trolling motor because I'll probably want that out soon. And then we'll just go for a little explore. Tide looks high enough. All this rock work's sort of underwater. I still have to skirt the edges but we should have enough water to get over most of it. What is the time? You know, I'll have to wait till that goes. Come on. Tell me. Except 6. 6.34, okay, so we're, we're actually a fair ways off high tide. <laughs> I don't think it's high tide until um, uh, 9.30 or somewhere around that. Oh, you know what? This has got fancy tide charts and everything. Look, if I just hit that side panel where the tide button is and I open this, look at this. How cool is this? I'm, I'm like, I love this thing. Oh, touch your bait. But you can see all this, so we're over here. That's the edge that we, where the wind was coming in from this direction, probably all more like that direction last night. The island will be back here. But uh, yeah, just go, look all this edge. Look, we've only just done this tiny little patch here. There's all up here, all down here. And then once it comes down, all out here. And that's where the big boys will hang. Oh, it's such a pity, it's such a pity that I'm not gonna go and be able to go get a Spanish because that was really one of the main goals of this whole trip. Can't believe. Forgot it completely about the closure. Yeah, the whole the whole drive up, I was just pumped. I was like, man, I've got this beautiful new gun. I'm so ready to get my first mackerel. I've got mates coming, so I'll feel more confident in the water because normally it's just me. I was like, this is going to be great. And now it's such a downer knowing that if I do say, look, if we see him, we'll get him on camera and you'll know that it was possible, <laughs> but we're not allowed. But, um, I guess the camera makes it rewarding anyway, but 
a bit of a bummer because uh, yeah, that would have been a pretty cool one to tick off, tick off the list. But it's all right. We'll get some spots. We'll get to know the area because we can always come back. And uh, mate, after just even exploring this little bit uh, in here, I'm definitely coming back soon. Oh, it's a bit of food from last night. It's gross. Campsite one. <laughs> Just gonna find another spot. Tomorrow I think I might put myself a little bit further away from the edge of the bombie. <laughs> Just to give myself a bit more of a buffer zone, maybe a little bit more sand around me as well so that anchor can regrip if it comes loose. Oh wow, look at that though. Amazingly beautiful, so clear. Oh. That's getting a little shallower. It's not too bad though. Yeah. Haven't seen any crayfish. Surely there's got to be a painted cray in there somewhere. Move that up a bit. It is going to get shallow up here. There's some birds working something over here as well. How was actually, I forgot to mention it yesterday, that those big like i don't know what they are like these like those big steep head like uh parrotfish massive like a meter long and i saw them disappear like they disappeared at speed <laughs> but they're uh, pretty impressive feel like a fly fisherman or something that's like that's like uh the pinnacle standard is not i think <laughs> pretty amazing Unless they were like Maori rats or something, maybe they could have been. There was like three or four of them, they took off real fast. Uh, let's get this hat on. And we'll have a little cast with that same lure. I guess we'll just uh, rock with that lure first, then we'll uh, try the next kind of thing. Why not? Yeah, those trouties couldn't resist this uh, lure just getting pumped pretty hard. Like, just that crazy action was driving them in there. They couldn't help themselves but grab it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh jeez, <laughs> I was just trying to get it out of the way of the trolling motor then and we've managed to hook something. Who is it? First, oh, something's coming after him. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like a big, oh, he just ran straight into a hole here. Oh no. Oh, son of a, he's run into a hole just there. But something big just came and tried to grab him like a bigger cod. Oh, it's going to snap for sure. Oh, Woo. <laughs> oh well, that's a bummer. So, I think it was a trout, coral trout or something. He grabbed it, but some really big cod, maybe about, you know, maybe 80 or 90 centimeters came chasing after him and he's run straight into that hole there. Ah, ah, bummer. I wasn't actually expecting to hook up anything there. I was, uh, I was literally just trying to, ooh, it's gonna get shallow here. We might have to uh, back away from here a little bit. But um, I wasn't actually expecting to get a fish here. I was just trying to get it back around the trolling motor. <laughs> um, what have we got here? Uh, we do have most of our leader back actually though. We just lost our lure. Hopefully he can shake that. I'm sorry, buddy. Ah, bummer. What have we got? We bought a whole stack of stuff. <laughs> so this is what we were using just a second ago. One of these. And I do have another one. But I think I might go something like this. These are all new, so let's go that dark one. Something like that, I reckon. Next one up. Okay, we'll have to trim that bit off. It's a bit, uh, bit tethered. Right. So yeah, he's, he's pretty much just like a 
walk the dog kind of style, just twitch, twitch, twitch across the surface. Okay, we've made it out to the edge. You can see the change in the water already. Here's the drop off. So we might just actually just get to the edge here and we'll just kill the motor altogether. Right here. Oh wow. It looks crystal clear. Look at this hole just here. I don't know if you can see very well, but that's, oh wow, look, is that a tusk fish or a big bright blue parrot? Oh, makes you want to jump in and have a dive. Let's just see which way we drift for a second. Oh, falling off. Uh, let's just have a nice gentle cast over some of these holes. There's got to be some bigger fish just lurking on these edges. We'll uh, pop this out of the way for now if we're going to go for a run out in the proper ocean. <laughs> we'll leave one side connected. That way we've got a nice clear space and we can use the casting deck up here as well. There, that's better. It's flapping around a bit. That worked real well. Knew I had that Velcro strap there for something. So, I guess we'll just see if the wind slowly pushes me down across this edge and uh, come what may. <laughs> I think I might switch over to a lure that sinks down a bit. Oh, something's coming over to have a look though, see that? Something just jumped out of the water over there. Whether he was being the chaser or the chasee, it's hard to tell. Okay. Nice. So surely that's got to be worth something. It definitely was working before in the flats. So hopefully it can work its magic here in slightly deeper water. Oh, hook it myself. Give that a jerk, eh? <laughs> yeah, right. Where are all the fish? Seems very quiet. Um, take quite a few casts. <laughs> There's more action down the bottom. Maybe we try something else. Oh. Oh. Wow. Well... <laughs> First fish on the plastic. Beautiful looking. I catch these back where I'm from though. <laughs> so that's not that exciting. Geez, they're cool looking though, aren't they? Very cool, but not what we came here for. See you bud. Oh, it's something, you know? <laughs> it's definitely something. <laughs> not exactly the amazing kind of epic coal trout or anything. I don't even know what I'm expecting, but hoping for something here. Another crack at it. There we go. Come around this side of the boat again, buddy. So we waited till you get down and almost down the bottom there. Let's see what we end up with. And he took off, he took that line very quick. It's like catching this my snapper technique. Oh, who have we got? And we've got, oh, look at you, like a type of emperor. Look at you, not that exciting at the end, <laughs> but we're getting closer to something pretty cool, a little bit bigger and we'd be on, ooh, beautiful looking fish, but again, not quite big enough, oh, <laughs> scared me, thought he was just going to chill, alright, well, <laughs> at least we're catching something now, and it's something. What a legend. Oi, okay. He's obviously not big enough to pull drag. 
<laughs> but we got something felt like the bottom then it's just a dead weight and that's why aha uh -huh, look the way these guys are cool though undulatus trigger <laughs> these triggers they'll take your hand off if they get a chance like i used to have some of them in my fish tank when i was younger and they're the most aggressive little things all right buddy come on we'll get you off yeah no fingers near the mouth on these guys they can crush rocks well not what i expected but very pretty look at these little fins flapping away okay buddy we'll get you back in Woo! Whoa. <laughs> outskis <laughs> look at that look at all those uh bites i don't want that many bites that means it's a leather jacket central down there <laughs> Might have to move on, but we'll see. Yeah, well, that pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? So there's obviously plagues of leather jacket, or uh, sorry, uh, triggerfish down there. So all those little nips out of it. Uh, we're just going to keep getting that going on. So maybe we head back. So uh, yeah, the weather is still pretty windy. So maybe we'll go back and maybe jump in the water again. Might uh try and get out of this sun for a little bit as well Let's head back <laughs> I guess we'll just drop anchor for a while, shelter up out of the sun, and then eventually, I guess the goal will be to jump in and have a little bit of a dive. Okay. I'll have to get this up just so I've got some shade because it's uh, pretty toasty. Let's get into that part of the time of the day where it's just, it just gets a bit unbearable, actually. <laughs> oh, I'm liking a, I'm liking the way I figured out how to do that. Just uh, that quick put down, and it just sort of clips on the side there. That's unreal. Makes it very easy to put back up. We'll just clip this one out here. And then we have at least some kind of sunshade. Which is important. Man, it is toasty. And yeah, can't do this in the, uh, oh, I can lean on that. You can't do this in the what's name, what was it? Uh, the stretcher bed. But um, whew, man, it is hot. I might even just jump in the water just to cool down and then we'll have a dive soon but right this very second I just want to rest up I've just had so much sun no amazing catches but still some pretty fun things to do and you know we got to see the area it's just unfortunately a little bit windy to to venture out to do the jigging so maybe tomorrow morning if that wind drops first light we'll head out and we'll see if we can do that jigging trip and then look I've got a feeling that the wind has stopped uh, my mates from coming out because if they were coming out you'd think they would be here by now and that wind doesn't seem to be letting up much so all the way back in the mainland it's probably pretty full on um, I'll hang around to see if those guys turn up I guess in the morning for a little bit and then if they don't uh, they'll, they're on their own there's two of them so they'll be all right it's a pity I can't I don't have any way to get in contact with them unless they're in radio range but I don't think they'll be in radio range today so anyway let's uh rest up hey, hey. look they turned up sweet <laughs> yeah it's coming in hot I'm going to jump in a bit of a swim and have a look anyway, so, so yeah. just see how close it is to that coral head. Yeah, how, how really <laughs> close it is. Yeah. We've got the flippers on, we're going to go for a little snorkel. I don't think there's any point, I've still got a little bit of cold trout left and I think the fellas uh, don't want to have a spear right now, they just want to have a bit of a look in the water. See if we can spot some favourite species.
Yeah. some spitting going on in there. Look, they're definitely coming in on that light, aren't they? It's got to be a big scooty coming in. <laughs> you never know. rainbow check out these rainbows that we keep getting it's amazing sunrise on this side rainbows on the other morning <laughs> it was really calm for a sec like or fairly calm and now it's just picked up again that wind yeah I was like oh here we go this is gonna be quite nice but now it's there for now. Ready for the day. Just got to slowly weave out through the bombies or the little coral patches. I'm getting there. I'm almost in the clear now. to pick through but we managed to get through. <laughs> it's alright, tide's coming up. Just gotta find a decent spot to put the anchor. It's no sand, it's sort of like this sort of sandy, rubbly, sort of no life on it but I need to get over here a bit. It's definitely not on there. I'm hooking on anything, but just the weight of the chain is enough to keep it down for now. But, why don't we just go and have a look at the island for a sec? <laughs> it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm keeping an eye out for a better sand patch. This is cool though. Oh look, you can see all the turtle tracks. Let's go and check those out. Yeah. Got like a... I think I stepped on one of those sea cucumbers. And the, um, he squirted all his stuff all over me. Look, and it's actually stinging. Oh, yowch. Yeah, right. Stuck me, stuck me with his stingy jelly or something. It's kind of like got barbs or something, and it hurts to pull off. I just have like to scrub it up. Yuck. It's really sticky as well. <laughs> just wash it off. Bizarre. 
is weird. Like sea cucumber stingers or something. Oh, this is pretty cool. Nice to get up on an island, some solid ground. So the boat doesn't go anywhere. But look, you can see there's some turtle tracks. So we've made their way up. And then, so we'll have to keep uh, away from the actual site, but if you go up here, look, you can see that they've dug a nest. Oh, here. That one looks very fresh. And then uh, up over here as well. But look, there's probably, look, there's so many divots that they're obviously been nesting everywhere here. So we won't walk up there. We'll uh, stay down on the beach area and go on the path. But you can see this one's a little bit more organized because they obviously want to keep people off the nests. So there's got a um, got a pathway that you've got to stick to. Oh, here we go. Like I'm just guessing, but they've got a sign here. January to May, hatchlings emerge. Okay. Oh, we're in the zone. How cool would it be if we got to see some? That would be awesome. You can see, like, there's so many nest sites. <laughs> like, every, every second, like, sort of divot is just another one and another one and another one. Oh look, and there's this like, clearly there's been hatchlings, there's little eggs, egg shells, let's go. Cool. Wow. Yeah, wow, look how many nest sites all the way up the beach, just everywhere. Yeah, it's a bit more regulated than I, I'd like my island to be, but I guess it's just because obviously this, it's just such a high breeding area. That they've just got to make sure that they protect it so people don't just start you know going crazy because it like if there wasn't all of that sort of track work that they put in i guess people would um just walk straight over all the nest sites everywhere so yeah i get it i get it but yeah pretty cool but uh so basically that you can camp on this island at certain times of the year but obviously at peak sort of hatching and breeding season they just close it off altogether and like in every tree, like everywhere, you can see there's these birds, there's a, like a young one, but there's birds in all these trees, there's nests everywhere. So it actually stinks quite a lot in there of like bird nests. But everywhere you go, you can see the nests just hanging off the trees everywhere. You can see those black spots, they're all nests everywhere. Yeah, right. I'm just giving this uh, spoon <laughs> a wash. I'm so used to not... Um, I never actually bring like breakfast or anything on these trips and these guys have brought like so much food and like so I promised them dinner or lunch but uh, they've got spoons to eat uh, and I didn't have one so we're using this shell. <laughs> I just realised. Yes. <laughs> oh you've got like you've got it all of it. Yeah. No 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 I got this. <laughs> I think this is going to work perfectly. Oh, I don't want to knock it off. Oh, or is it? There we go. Yeah, Thank you. That's goodies. I must have a ranger here or a um, host during camping season. And this is Tiger Shark. Okay, so there's a little turtle here, and we just saw a little, a smaller tiger shark, but still fairly hefty, like just cruising the shallows there. So they eat basically those turtles. So <laughs> where have you lost? Can you keep? Can you see the shark still? Oh, is he just there? Is that because I can see something there as well? That's sort of exactly what he'd be cruising those shallows for, really, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we've got to get back in now, but uh, <laughs> it's gotten a little bit deeper, so we'll walk out. Try not to get cucumbered. Oh. They're everywhere. Yeah, I don't care about the shark. I'm worried about the... <laughs> <laughs> These sea cucumbers are deadly, mate. Yeah. You don't understand. It was really creepy. It Something's still got me. Look, it's all over my leg. Ah, oh, son of a. Oh, look. 
My anger is being cucumbered. <laughs> Look at that, it's all that stringy stuff. Yeah. Look at that, yeah, it's all over it too. Yeah, oh, you look at that one. It looks particularly beautiful at the moment. Look at that. Wow. All right, we're just gonna find a big sand patch where I can put my anchor down and we're good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave my boat and we'll go in their boat and we'll just go out to this outer edge and the drop off and we'll just uh, have a spear there because uh, yeah otherwise anchoring there's no point in taking two boats but anchoring could be a pain out there because it's all reef I don't even really know which way we're going to drift I guess back that way but it's sort of so still here <laughs> it's all right we'll see if it starts going I don't think it's going to get any direction except out that way, so we'll be able to see it yeah, <laughs> if it starts yeah. disappearing <laughs> over the horizon. Oh. Yep. Alright, Thanks for going down and getting that. Not the biggest trout, but it's a start. <laughs> Cheers. Ready? Thank you.
Oh, nice shot too. Let's just lead it. Sorry. All right, yours first round. Yeah, nice. Good job, man. <laughs> that is a beautiful first trout. Look at that. It looks like a strawberry. Wow. Look, it's, it's about to yeah. disappear as well. Look, <laughs> it's just swept over in one big lot. He stoned him, yeah. <laughs> that Spanish is back. That Spanish is back. Got to run under us again. <laughs> yeah, right up the top of the head, yeah. Oh, nice. Good job. <laughs> That's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. 
nice little holes there, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Safe and sound, eh? Right where we left there. Probably should take the keys out next time. Off they go. Follow close behind. How good was that though? That was great. Like, how's that Spanish just making fun of us? We knew that had happened as soon as we did that, like uh, get in and as soon as it, it it's like he knew it was Spanish mackerel close season, so as soon as Yord speared that first one, this mackerel just comes in. Not a bad size one, probably made a metre 20 or so. But um, yeah, and then he came in again after someone, we had another shot and uh, he was just hanging around. He would have been an easy one to uh, get as well. So we'll get there, we'll get there with the new gun. But um, yeah, it was a bit of a bummer that we couldn't get him. Apart from that though, it was a great spear, had fun. Like I don't often get to do like slightly, not that it was that deep, but um, you know, like for me, that's pretty deep water. Like I think, um, I don't know, I was going down, probably max I did today was about 13 meters because I borrowed Chris's watch and uh, checked it out. And then apart from that, like in the beginning, I was trying to get down and I was like, geez, why can't I get down to that depth? I should be able to make 10, no problems. Like, but then because it was so clear, I didn't realize Yord goes, no, 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 that's 20 because he had his watch on. He's like, no, no, that was just like 20 meters. Found my feet eventually in the beginning. My ears were, uh, re I was really struggling to equalize. And, uh, but once I just slowed down and just let myself drift down, uh, yeah, no problems at all. Yeah, much more relaxed and comfortable. Wouldn't mind getting myself one of those dive watches. They're pretty cool, aren't they? That was really handy to see, like, because I'm always guessing how deep I'm going, but I never really know. And just having that watch, even if you're just doing shallow stuff, any kind of stuff, like, just to know exactly how deep you went and how long you were down for, I think, and, and how long you've been recovering up top. I think, um, super important and super handy. All right, let's uh, pack a few things up before they get wet. I don't want them to get wet, that's for sure. And let's chuck these in. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll get some dry clothes on quickly. We're getting uh, the tarp set up going. Surprisingly, like last night, it actually held up really well. Gave him some wind shelter. Yord slept up the front, and uh, Chris was in the uh, hammock. <laughs> It's actually a pretty good setup in the end. Alright, we'll just come in and we'll probably just hook on the back. Yeah, we'll be doing something else as well. If we've got other things, I'll just do the salad with the trout and just cook the trout like last night, but with the salad. And then, and then we've, I think we'll, we'll have enough, yeah, for sure. Because I only did that, that one, like, sort of half fillet last time, last night. Well, the fellas are going to look for a nice place to, um, Set anchor tonight, but um, while they're gone, I'm going to try and make a bit of a mango salad, uh, just so uh, I can supply some food because they've <laughs> they've brought all this food, right? And I'm so used to not really eating except that one meal a day on these trips that I feel really bad because uh, um, they've just been like making sandwiches and all kinds of stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I'll have a sandwich. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I said, I'll oh, look, I'll cook uh, a nice uh, pre-dinner snack. Um, so we've cut up one coral trout, that's the small one I got at the very beginning of the spearfishing session today. And I've put some white vinegar in this cup. I'm sort of down to my last kind of, I don't really have um, enough containers to do like uh, bigger meals, so I'm just sort of using whatever I can. So we're just going to put vinegar, I'll put some white sugar and um, a little bit of soy and a little bit of um, oh, oil, olive oil in there and we'll make a nice dressing and then um, yeah and then we might cut up a few other things. Splash of soy. Plenty. This is actually tamari but you get the idea and we'll whack the sugar in. Pretty much all that sugar will go in. And if we don't 
have enough sweetness, we can always add some honey because I've got honey now as well. Mix this around. Hopefully, we won't need to add heat. If we do, we can heat the cup. Mm, try it. Mm, yeah, no, it's good. Still vinegary, but still very sweet. A little bit of soy to cut it down. Beauty. on obviously and mix it again uh, it. but I do need like some plates or something to plate this up because <laughs> I'm going to need the pan to cook on <laughs> there's all our dinner prep it's pretty much all done so once we get our dressing on we'll put that in place and then we'll cook our fish put it on top and we're good to go but let's go over and join the uh, campsite <laughs> All right, we, we're ready. We're ready to cook, but I realised I needed some. Um, I need some uh, plates. Have you got plates so yeah. I can put the salad on? Because I was like, I got nowhere to cook it. I'm not used to having guests. Just a go for it affair, I guess. And then we'll just put the fish on top. I don't know why I'm trying to do it on there. That seems like what we accident went and happened, doesn't it? There's the first, there's the picking entree. <laughs> there we go. So chopsticks could work, but you might need something to scoop up mm -hmm. as well. Mmm. <laughs> no. That'll do. Alright, let's try that again. I just realised I had the camera on super view, so everyone's going to be blown out in like really uh, fish-eyed. So we've switched it back to regular wide is what we actually really wanted. If I can actually get some of my fork. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> my head in the screen now isn't like the whole screen. Mm. That's good. You can pour that dressing on just about anything and it tastes really good actually. Yeah, like any salad. <laughs> that mango makes it awesome, eh? Yeah, it's sweetness, isn't it? Sweetness. I love the sweetness. A bit of sour, a bit sweet. Yeah, my avo was could have been a little bit um fresher or like riper. Sorry, yeah. it's fresher. <laughs> it's not just mmm, <laughs> mm. yum. Nuts first course, and then what have we got for second course? Well, Nuts. Natalie's chicken. And Natalie's home cooked. Yeah, yeah. Small, small, small pot, lots of food. Eating like kings on this trip. It's not, a, it's not a survival trip, it's a enjoying the trip and just finding a scoping out a new place and we've definitely 
had a good sort of view over the whole like lagoon and on the outsides today so it's been pretty good but uh yeah look at the setting it's, it's out of control in fact and you're all in this protection of the lagoon hopefully that wind's right down so hopefully if it stays like this we're gonna have a very very nice sleep and a good day tomorrow yeah. lovely